Uh, good morning and welcome to Chai and Mai. Uh, thank you all for coming on this long weekend, coming in person, uh, both here as well as all those who are joining us online. Uh, for the online audience, uh, we are trying this in a lecture in the college. Uh, please use headphones, it will be easier for you if you have earphones or headphones for the audio. Uh, it will be, we recommend that. Now, online audience, especially, we can't see you. So if you have a question, please type it in the chat if you're watching on Zoom or you. Uh, we will answer your questions as best we can, either during the talk or at the end. So before we start, uh, it, it's a pleasure to introduce Chayanwai. Chayanwai is an outreach offering from the IFR, which happens on the first Sunday of every month at Disney Theatre in Mumbai, on the third Sunday of every month in Rupaya College in Madunga, if a month has a fifth Sunday, hopefully at Alexandra School in Court, we will have a fifth Sunday. Uh, we will keep you posted about these events. And now the sessions at Christy and Ruparel are back in person, though we are also on YouTube and on Zoom. Coming up, in May, we start our summer special. These are usually hands-on activities meant for children of all ages. Uh, we will keep you posted about them. Uh, the first Sunday of May, we're going to do some design activities at the Petri Cafe. In the middle of May, we're going to do some mathematics puzzles. So there's lots of fun stuff coming up. But before that, let's get started with today's session. And it's a pleasure to introduce Shubhajit Sinha. Shubhajit is a uh, final year PhD student at the IFR in the Nanoelectronics Group, where he works on lots of very cool stuff, but flat stuff. Two-dimensional stuff. That's what he's going to tell us about today. So Shubhaji is from Kolkata. He did his BSc at the Xavier College Kolkata and then joined the IFR for an integrated PhD program. And uh, he is going to tell us how electrons dance, but in very thin sheets. Got it. Right? Got it. So over to you, Shubhaji. Okay. And uh, yeah, let's go. We have lots of school students here. So you know, let's make sure that we keep it. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy. Okay, let's start with screen sharing. So you can screen share now, yes. Chat me kuch na. Oh. Okay. Uh, one second, one second. On Zoom, it is you're sharing your uh, presenter view. Can you switch off presenter view? I will I will share this on screen too. Yeah. Abhi? Is it now? Okay. Oh, I can switch. Hey, it's not switching, sorry. Slides are not switching. Are you extended this now? No, no, no. Okay, duplicate key, are we? Yeah, now more is the switch off presenter. Ah, presenter is switch off. Nice. Uh, it's fine? You're not sharing screen. Now? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, let me just check on Zoom. Uh, okay, good. Good. Okay, so good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining this session today's morning. So before I, I really want to thank Professor Arnab for this, uh, uh, for uh, giving this important opportunity for me to join the Chai and Y session and uh, discuss about these effects today and the full Chai and Y team, thank you very much. So 
today what we are going to talk about so today we are going to talk about plateaus valleys and donuts so plateaus valleys and donuts you know plateaus wadiyas you hear in and see in lonavala etc valleys also donuts you eat so these are the things that i am going to talk about but not in our 3d world but today we are going to talk about 2d world and how this new physics that we are going to discuss about has is kind of revolutionizing the world and what effects it will show up in the 2d in electrons properties that we will discuss so for uh, jumping off so let's discuss what 2d so every one of us knows 3d right let's say a sphere or a cuboid so every object around us is kind of 3d now let's imagine you reduce one of these dimensions or let's say height ko quench kar diya ya squeeze kar diya you have a plain sheet of paper that the 2d object but even the height of the plain sheet of paper is kind of quite uh, like high in terms of the world that i am going to talk about the 2d world you can see uh, you can imagine it kind of maybe the surface of this 3d the surface here so you can be it can be now what's 1d 1d will be kind of a pen you know or a pencil or linear trajectory geometry has done so that's 1d you can see that uh, let's say 2d ka one edge if you take that's actually 1d now if i can imagine the corner of the or the vertex of this keyboard a very small point right that's what is zodi i haven't indicated anything out here uh, so i have kind of quenched every dimension of it okay so i have told you what mission we are going to talk about so we are going to restrict ourselves in this uh, presentation with the effects that we see in this 2d world flat so how much should we use and before going to that let's can anyone identify so this is golden in color can anyone identify ye kya hai kya ek medal hai kaun sa medal hai ye anyone guesses absolutely so this is a nobel prize when when it is given um, to like famous scientists and this is golden in color right so let me ask a question if i reduce the size so i will talk about this unit called angstrom in a bit but the gold i kind of use the sizes to very very small particles so now you can see so these are golden solutions prepared this is but the color is not yellow right it's kind of pinkish in color right so how did this happen so this is kind of the preliminary way to say that if i reduce kind of the dimensions it basically can give a plethora of new things bahut acche acche cheeze hame dikhai dega as one of the examples the next example is the paintings from medieval age so you might seen glass paintings so let me say this glass paintings all the people uh, in the medieval age did not know so these are actually this blue colors you see this is actually the red colors they are all like small particles of gold kind of trapped in the glass and some sort particles to give some different colors so as you reduce the dimension there are various funny things that coming up so we will discuss some of these effects and how this is kind of revolutionizing the world so how small we have to go to reach 2d world from 3d so 3d how much we have to squeeze one of the dimension so we can say that is 2d so to discuss that so imagine this is your so this is sun right this is a image from taken from nasa website so this is the sun and a small planet here is actually venus transiting around the sun so actually the diameter of the sun you know is some 10 to the power 10 km it's a huge object in our like galaxy right now think of this fact so i take the sun that must be the object if you want to describe it please give us the details in terms of the mind okay if you want to go back to the laptop mind maybe you have a second okay fine fine just not here If you guys start from beginning, sure. Uh, 
Okay, fine. So I was discussing that let's think of the sun as the big object that we know, 10 to the power 10 odd kilometers, like a, like you write one and 10 zeros after it, that much kilometer you have to traverse to get to the diameter of the sun. So you take that big sun and think that you squeeze that sun in the size of a football that we know. That's actually less than half a meter. So that much squeezing you are doing from the sun's diameter, you are going to the football. So now think that you are doing the same squeezing from the football to the, uh, like reduce the dimension of the football to the same amount as you did from going to sun to football. And that's where we go to the 2D world. So 3D object, the height that we have to reduce that much to go to this 2D world. And you know this uh, unit and strong so I had here uh, uh, like your high school. So this Anstrom, that is uh, ten of tens of Anstrom. That's uh, where we reach, and we call it the nano world or the nanometer world. Uh, so typically, you must have heard about nanotechnology in today's world. So that's what people talk about. So we have reduced the dimension, and there are various applications of uh, like devices, etc., of this uh, nanometer world that we are going to talk about today. So before I go to that, so we know that what determines the name of a prehistoric age. So let's say we had stone age in prehistoric times. Now comes the next time bronze age and uh, iron age. So the fact that the utensils or the materials that were used in that, it, uh, that age determines the name of that age. For stone age, people used to use stone to kill animals. For bronze age, people used to use bronze and so on and so, so forth. And now we are in the 21st century, now what determines the name of the uh, uh, century is the processes or the physics processes. And now we can say that we are in the quantum age. So why quantum age? You must have read the blogs uh, published by Google. Uh, it said something about quantum supremacy, that they have gained some quantum supremacy. And what basically it is that they are using very, very quantum funny quantum mechanical uh, devices that actually can perform some operations of uh, that we are used to do in classical computers much, much faster. So a classical computer, let's say if it takes thousands of years to complete some interesting operations, calculations, this uh, quantum computer can just do it in a bit. So we are uh, using the devices uh, of this 2D, uh, 2D world to get the, gain this kind of quantum uh, uh, supremacy. So how we went from this, uh, classical like world and made this huge leap, giant leap called the quantum leap and went to the quantum world. Can you just hold the last thing on the screen, the height moving the toe? More. The height that was, height moving the toe. Good move. Height moving the toe. Oh. Height moving yeah. the toe. Very yeah. good. Thanks. Every time I do it. Okay, nice. Nice. So this is the quantum revolution that I'm going, I'm going to talk about. So let's say you have a pond, okay? And you kind of uh, dip or throw two stones in it that creates, creates ripples in it. So what you will see? You will see that the ripples kind of merge there in terms of crests and troughs, which are called ups and downs in the waves. So don't worry about it. So but this is a kind of a principle of quantum mechanics that states or whatever uh, you call it can reside simultaneously. So this is the cat of Schrodinger. I, uh, you must have seen many of you. So Schrodinger's cat, what it brought to us in a comical way is the fact that we knew that we can be either dead or alive. 
now uh, schrodinger uh, cat tell us that this cat can be dead and alive at the same time so dead and alive from dead or alive okay so that's what quantum mechanics tells us that in a classical way if you think about uh, states that are cannot be going going existing uh, simultaneously that actually it's permitted in the quantum mechanical way of representation electrons in specifically can stay both in multiple states together so this has huge applications in this quantum devices but uh, don't remember all this stuff just the small stuff that i want to tell uh, is have anyone seen this constant it's uh, h uh, what constant is it called try true 100% true okay let's give some time 20 seconds uh, for the online audience yeah so you can ask online audience please put it in the chat uh, so h what is the name of the constant either is the gravitational constant or what constant is this h we wait for uh, 30 seconds so you must have seen this in uh, many formulas uh, in textbooks Likai. Yeah. Yeah. Do the same. Nice constant. Nice. That's absolutely right. So it's a Planck's constant. So what the we uh, we can proceed, right? Yeah. So Planck's constant. I just want to give you this message that wherever you see this H the, or the Planck's constant, just remember that it's uh, the formula is connected to quantum mechanics. That's the main thing I want to uh, tell you. so before i dive into the 2d world so let's talk about transistors or some transistor devices how it changed from the 3d world to the 2d world so earlier in 1920s or 1930s you must have seen this three scientists bardin's company and they got the nobel prize so they had huge 3d blocks of semiconductor devices to create transistors so i'll just come what transistor action is but basically you can send in current and modulate the flow of electron by something called gate i will talk about that now i make a huge jump of 80 years and come to our lab so these are right from like images from our lab where we see some flat kind of 2d materials um, so this is a view from the top view where you can see this material stack and on another material so this is how we kind of make 2d transistors we can stack one on top of the other very very thin flat surfaces as we talked about and this can be uh, like made to use as the same transistor effect or even enhanced quantum mechanical effects you can see so how to think about the gate action and uh, transistors uh, before going to that let's compare the dimension of the transistor so this is the image of can anyone guess the image of the, uh, what's the image of this uh, like what is this image uh, it's a very zoomed in image and it's very common absolutely right yeah so it's the human hair and its dimension is something called the micrometer so it's like 50 micron 100 micrometer so our transistor that we make in the lab is even smaller than that it's like one or five times smaller it's the length and breadth is 10 micrometer so that's how small the world we are going to talk about and why are we interested in these devices um, to understand that oh. what are these golden yellow yellow things and what okay 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 nice question so that, that's a nice question so can you repeat the question please in your yeah so the question is that what are this yellow thing that's coming here and what this uh, greenish things so it's a interesting question so these are actually leads so so see your online audience must be your pointer okay so point on the online audience your mouse okay so i hope you can see the mouse pointer here so the question is this uh, yellow and this uh, leads that are coming to what are these and why are they used so i'll just come to it in the next slide so it is the leads that used to send in currents to it and measure voltages so why we required to send currents and why we required to measure voltages it's because there is a next slide if i go i want to measure something called the resistance so these are the that are the leads that helps to measure the resistance so just to jog our memory i'm sure everyone knows what resistance and how you can think about it so let's just imagine the pipe that we know the flow of water coming out from the pipe 
so what's uh, causing resistance to it the pipe diameter right you can squeeze it and increase the resistance so similarly if you have a source and the drain let's say you have a source of some high voltage and the drain that sinks the uh, flowing current in it you can characterize uh, the resistance of the material by just defining the voltage differences v divided by the current flow increase there's just ohms law i think everyone knows it uh, so this uh, voltage and current that we have to uh, send in and measure uh, to find the resistance of the material that's why this uh, leads are kind of used and we do it routinely in our thing so i want to motivate it why we want to uh, measure resistance and how resistance helps in identifying novel materials okay so what's the motivation for doing all this so earlier the pcs and all like mobile devices what's the motivating motivating factor for increasing the performances of that so we know that uh, people want to use faster and faster processing speeds etc so there is one caveat in that so as we go faster and faster what really happens is that the energy consumption also increases so you can see this is a graph of energy and uh, the years that we are in so the energy consumption is increasing so we must do something about it right we have to do something to reduce or either saturate parts and then reduce this consumption so people in now uh, uh, now uh, uh, present time what they are looking for is not for going faster and faster but lower and lower energy consumption so that's the guiding law and lower and lower energy consumption how i have i can find device with lower and lower energy consumption it's basically lower and lower resistance of the devices that i have to um, see to so if you have a material with low resistance that means low power consumption and that's the material that we have to use for our uh, 2d devices so there is another observation i think many of you have uh, heard about it's called the moore's law of economics so what it says is the transistor count that we have in our kind of chips it kinds of doubles every 2 years and if i plot it in this way it's kind of linearly going up so from 1000 to 2000 now it's at reach kind of millions and probably billions it's going to be but let me ask you this question so i increase the number of transistors and this and transistor do not come by its own it requires the wiring that i showed you in the previous uh, slide so to increase the wiring uh, what basically if i increase the number of the transistors what will happen there will be a huge chaos right so how to think about it so let's say you have this uh, like road busy road in some streets there's a huge chaos because the number of traffic is uncontrolled and it has uh, like no one can flow and that's why no one can flow means there is the resistance has gone high so how to solve it here comes the motivation from 2d world we will see how this effect we get in 2d we build highways something analogous to highways we can send uh, vehicles very uh, like in a resistance less way to paths parallel to each other and uh, anti flowing is so one direction is this another is the other one where the vehicles can flow smoothly without much resistance so how this uh, is manifested in 2d world we are going to see just now so before uh, going to that we want just two concepts so i just want uh, patience for two three minutes two co small concepts one is the band uh, which i am going to talk about i'm sure you know uh, this so this is 1s2 2s2 levels that we must have read in uh, your uh, schools so these are levels when the atom is kind of separated from each other it's isolated it means we take one atom and that's the energy level of this so for example in this case it's carbon right six uh, electrons 1s2 2s2 2s2 now when i bring many many carbon atoms together let's say avogadro number of carbon atoms together what happens is that these levels that are there they kind of start coming closer to each other but they, the energy level is not at the same energy it kind of splits up and this is where and this is what happens in kind of uh, uh, device or uh, like material diamond when you, you have a question sir okay okay so when many materials uh, when many atoms of carbon come together you squeeze it to really really small space uh, diamond forms and this is the way in which uh, the energy can be represented of the electron no two electrons will reside in the same place but don't worry about it there is another representation of the same thing which is called the relation between the energy and the momentum so uh, any moving object has a momentum you must have heard about so a moving object has momentum means it has energy the kinetic energy so elect a free electron that's the electron isolated uh, it's allowed to move freely that has a energy momentum relationship like this e is equal to k square 
which basically gives something graphically if i represent it energy and momentum it's kind of parabola now when i go to a 3d object and see the same energy momentum relationship it basically remains parabola just the mass kind of gets a bit heavier and that's why this graph kind of bends uh, a bit now if i jump from 3d to 2d what happens is i have this uh, levels this levels of energy kind of splits so splits up so one energy of this level is higher than this it's no longer a uni energy it's kind of splitted in structure so this effect that we are splitting of energy levels will give some of the things that i just discussed so i want to say that i can uh, this effects of 2d world has actually entered in our life in the way you must know this that present two years back our kind of definition of weight got the si unit of weight how it was defined it was actually changed so if you google it and maybe go to this sites smithsonian.com will find that the definition of weight has changed and now the 2d world or the physics out uh, some physics called the uh, uh, quantum effects uh, defines redefines how kilogram is defined so earlier it was this platinum iridium rod which we must have uh, read in textbooks now it's defined in a, another way and that is governed from the some physics out of this 2d material so i talked about bands this is the last concept i require to jump into the plateaus and etc so this is the level of uh, the fermi level okay so what the fermi level is you can actually think about is it's the level till which electrons are sitting so you fill in electrons in a c and the highest level occupied by electrons is given by this fermi level so i talked about the simplistic picture of bands so uh, this are kind of very complicated in uh, like complex materials that we deal with this is a real image of a band structure of a material which uh, in the y axis is energy and in the x axis is the, the momentum so this is how it looks like now what 2d material gives us is this unique control of the fermi energy so you can push it down and up at will and what you can do is you can study the properties of this individual bands specifically you don't have to study the full picture at once you can go to individual bands and study them and why this is important so <clears throat> these bands i will discuss is actually topological in nature so uh, what topology is i'll discuss in a bit but it actually uh, helps in determining the uh, topology of specific bands okay how to now how do we inject the like charges in it so we you know this picture right the uh, if you take a capacitor and apply voltage the charge injected is given by this formula q is equal to cv you increase the voltage you increase the charges so this 2d material you can actually think it as a play, uh, sheet of a parallel plate capacitor so in a parallel plate capacitor you have two kind of parallel plates right you must have seen this in uh, your textbooks so one plate here is that your 2d material and another plate is the gate that we talked about earlier uh, electrode which lies beneath the 2d transistor to inject charges in it and this is all the tools that we require we have the source and drain to measure resistances that we talked about and this is a third knob to tune the energy levels by this capacitive effect so that's that's completely uh, what our transistors look like now i go to this interesting effect uh, from our school textbooks i will just um, mention the phenomena and ask how what it is so if i flow a current along a 3d like object so and apply a perpendicular voltage to it so if i take a 3d object send in current like this and apply a perpendicular voltage to it so what happens the electrons kind of bend in a perpendicular voltage or magnetic field sorry <laughs> that's the important point sorry so i apply a perpendicular magnetic field yeah so if i apply a perpendicular magnetic field the electron kind of bends in a perpendicular direction and one can have a perpendicular voltage to it so what's the effect called yeah absolutely so uh people in the online mode can please type in so what's this effect that i'm going to talk about uh can you please do this repeat this once more with your mouse so that people know which way the current goes. okay okay sure so this is a 3d material and i am sending the current uh, like along the pointer of the mouse that i'm going uh, showing here so i'm sending the current in this direction and applying the perpendicular uh, magnetic field in the this arrow as we pointed out by this blue arrow so when one does that 
the electrons kind of bend perpendicularly to the flow of the current so flow of current is basically flow of electrons right but it is no longer flowing the electrons are no longer flowing along the uh, current but it's kind of bending uh, suddenly and creating a voltage drop so which effect is this so india science paper says this is the hall effect it's absolutely the hall effect so it, that's the correct answer so it is the hall effect and what we know that as i increase the magnitude of the magnetic field this hall voltage or if i normalize it with divide it with the current we get a resi hall resistance that actually scales linearly with magnetic field now i jump into the 2d world so if i take the same 2d uh, means not the 3d material but the 2d material sorry yeah yeah okay okay if i take the 2d material now repeat the same experiment of applying a perpendicular voltage now what i see surprisingly so here the blue actually now denotes the res hall resistance measured there are actually steps in the hall resistance as i increase the magnetic field and this is what the steps are called plateaus and this is uh, we can see routinely in our uh, experiments and we see this well uh, plateaus that are forming as i increase the uh, uh, magnetic field and this uh, we can see the formula of the plateaus that are uh, that are forming here so the formula of the uh, resistance uh, is given by this uh, formula and it actually has a quick cute thing hanging around its h right so remember what i discussed earlier so any formula in which you see this h you immediately recognize that it's a quantum formula so actually this phenomena is called the quantum version of the hall effect we just discussed earlier and this straight away gave the nobel prize for various reasons i'll talk about how this uh, plateaus uh, we are seeing and why it is got the nobel prizes so i discussed about the uh, energy levels you remember so what happens in a magnetic field is that the energy levels kind of get uh, quantized quantized in the uh, in the sense that it's no longer a uh, parabola like this it's kind of flat uh, many levels which are flat in presence of magnetic field and now when i repeat the same uh, thing in the presence of magnet with the 2d material what's happening is that there is one small point here is that the uh, slope of this energy versus uh, distance here this is basically the age of the sample the energy goes up and the slope gives the velocity of the moving electron so this is actually a positive slope along one edge and this is actually a negative slope so what happens is along a 2d surface 2d materials the edges there are straight edges of electrons that are flowing so remember the highway picture i talked about at the initial slide so this is basically a movement of electrons in this highway uh, system so there there is no chaos now electrons can flow smoothly and how smooth they can flow it's actually quite amazing the value of the resistance that we get it's accurate to 10 to the power one part in 10 to the power 9 that's 100 crore so what i mean uh, by that is that if i uh, measure the resistance i can accurately tell its value to decimals 0.0000 many that's to the power like nine zeros and then one one so that's the accuracy i'm talking about uh, that's uh, possible in this 2d materials and how to understand this phenomena why why this is so accurate so to understand understand this we come to this uh, concept of topology so there are many materials lying around in our uh, day to day life right so if i uh, ask you what this so this is the volleyball that we play this is the kind of the bowling ball you must have played in uh, markers and this is our favorite character oswald so anyone knows this uh, name of this small dog uh, in your comic character it's uh, bini right <laughs> nice okay so these are various uh, materials like very different different materials but for a topologist point of view all these materials are kind of same so how is it same so to see it we can count the, uh, we should look at the number of holes so this holes in the sense this volleyball don't have any holes this has you can see three holes but it is not a through hole so it kind of if we have played the holes kind of end midway in this uh, bowling balls and of course comic character as well uh, so all these materials can be characterized by the number of holes so this is a uh, characterization with examples when the number of holes is zero 
we have examples in our daily life where the number of holes is one so this is chai of uh, chai and wine so chai uh, in a plate and the cup has one hole so these are some breakfast meruvaras where you also have one hole for meruvara and what uh, determines whether uh, this forms the same class of materials is that you can actually take a clay model and smoothly deform a meruvara into a uh, cup so that's how it is determined that these two materials kind of uh, for fall in the same class of topology uh, there are, um, in mathematics it's kind of gets a bit complicated and uh, the technical term is uh, genus uh, what genus gives is kind of the topology of a material so it's just a mathematical number to indicate different topologies so zero and one is not the same topology it's a different so uh, i want to motivate and show some like cartoonish magics to uh, motivate why different topologies matter and what happens when different topologies meet with each other so this is a chain of a kind of polymer and don't worry about it it's uh, quite simplistic don't uh, worry about uh, all these complicated chains so i just want to say about the a and the b phase it's two different phases of the molecules and it's kind of a different topological uh, like a phase and b phase is uh, different in its topology now what i'm doing is i am representing the a phase in this cartoonish format where every in every double bond i am using a extra electron okay and b phase is just the same it's just that the starting alternating uh, double bond is parts comes parts in b phase so i am representing the cartoon in the same way uh, like extra electron wherever there is a double bond now i take a long chain of this polymer and i have talked about the capacity effect how you can add like electron at will so i just drop a electron okay now i so what are these yeah red ups and downs and the blues yeah so the question is what are these uh, reds and blues so the blues is actually the extra representation of the extra electron uh, of the double bond and this is uh, reds is just a pocket uh, schematically to represent the uh, kind of energy levels but it's not very important right now just the wherever the presence of electrons are there extra double bond that's i am placing it so i add the electron there and i do some moving around okay two times i do the same moving around and now boom a magic has already happened so if i i added only one electron light and what's the electronic charge you know it's e and if i take an axis like this you can immediately see that the charge that i had dropped at the center has kind of now separated in space and now i have two different uh, places where the charge has kind of accumulated in the same manner so here here i have e by 2 and here i have e by but wait you read in your textbooks that the electronic charge is indivisible right but here is kind of seems of uh, kind of violation of that principle and that's magic because i talked about this a and b phases of this molecule being different topological uh, topological properties having different topological properties they are now meeting at these places where you see this uh, charges kind of uh, getting hub so just the message that i want to give is if surfaces or like uh, surfaces of different topologies meet with each other so at the boundary very interesting thing happens you have a question huh oh no i should not think it that way so uh, so the question is if the charge is kind of accumulated i uh, like i mark the boundary so should not it be 2e so uh, it's uh, it's basically a schematic so i think the confusion is from the schematic so it's a good good question so the thing is that i uh, how i am telling uh, is i added one electron okay now this uh, this circle that i am representing is not the charge of uh, like uh, uh, some of this both the two electrons what i am saying is that the one electron that i had added wo oh, ek electron jo add kar diya that has gone and accumulated somewhere so like you have this axis so from symmetry uh, accumulation kidhar hua like i can see two different places where these electrons have kind of accumulated and if i agar like like if i have taken a uh, like triangular chain tab like if we have uh, accumulation agar teen jagah pe hota then it have been e by 3 kind of so accumulation two different jagah pe hua 
so that's why i'm saying ki the extra electron that i had added it's not the present that the charge of the electron yeah 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 not the like uh, total charge of the molecule there i am saying that wo extra electron jo add kiya tha uska kaisa redistribution hua uska kind of e by 2 ho gaya so uh, it's basically i am want to say that when different topologies meet with each other interesting thing happens and that's what the scientists of 2016 uh, nobel prize kind of realized they said and come up with this interesting idea is that the 2d material we talked about and uh, the edges flowing uh, at the like this edge these are called edge modes or edge channels of these electrons um, what is happening here is that this material in the presence of the magnetic field has turned to be a topological material uh, with a non trivial topology uh, now what is happening is this material is at the boundary meeting with like just ambient air right if i this is our 2d material so let's think our 2d material is topological and this is a like just air with a different topological number it's kind of non uh, trivial topological number so at the boundary uh, these edge channels are flowing so it's basically a manifestation of the same fact that different topologies are meeting and at the boundary i have this uh, unique uh, quantization that uh, is happening and even if you have dusts let me say the channels kind of have uh, non trivial ways of bending here and there and it can propagate in the same direction whereas if i think about 3d that uh, electrons would have collided and gone kind of back scatter it's called scattering but that's not happening and since it is uh, this way what's happening is i don't if i increase the magnetic field i have like a plateau in uh, resistance in the hall resistance i can explain it later why is this plateau and uh, the resistance here like the longitudinal resistance that if i measure the resistance at in the flow of the direction of uh, the flow of the current so that's actually comes out to be very minimal so you can see the red curve here so wherever this phenomena is happening is basically the resistance uh, is kind of flow resistance less this uh, channels kind of flow in a resistance less way so now you remember i talked about you should look about some uh, devices that have zero kind of resistances or very low resistances so this is one way in the 2d uh, world how this is manifested in the presence of magnetic field uh, okay you must have seen this poster for many uh, times so any cases how what i was trying to represent by this art uh, okay it may be tough so let me tell them so it's just a representation of the fact that uh, let's say we human beings ourselves are like squeezed or uh, in some way that we have turned into a 2d our world is no longer 3d we are in 2d so what would happen is that we ourselves would kind of move along the edges of the road if the road is kind of a special matter so don't worry about it it's just a representation so uh we have now some more problems at hand to solve okay we have solved some going to the low resistance state but there is a problem you realize so the you think about this value of the magnetic field that i'm talking about it's actually 5 tesla 6 tesla like that so how much is it higher than the you know that earth by itself has some magnetic field of its own right so it actually is higher these values is only achievable in labs this 5 uh, tesla 6 tesla values it's 10 to the power 5 times higher than the value of uh, the earth's magnetic field so 10 to the power 5 times would mean that 1 and 5 zeros you know so that much higher magnetic field you have to apply to get to this uh, effect that uh, quantum hall effect that we talked about so how to solve this problem so we have to find some unique ways to have the same effect but at zero magnetic field then we can use that to the device in our day to day life right so to uh, uh, to go to that we require some materials which are like topological like i discussed about the interesting effects of topological uh, so how uh, you can think about uh, materials which are topological is you know a samosa so a samosa has this outer covering and it has alu in it so in a like non topological world like our world 3d world we can separate the alu from the samosa right now in the uh, like non trivial topology if it is uh, the samosa is topological that we it will not allow the alu to be separated as uh, soon as you have a crunch yeah on the samosa <laughs> what will happen it it will cover the surface means in simple terms what i want to say is uh, the surface and the 
bulk that means interior of the material cannot be separated so there are materials which if you cut that the it will not expose the interior of the material but create a new surface on it to preserve and all these uh, uh, things that i am going to talk about i'm talking about is basically happening at the surfaces like interesting things of topologies etc happening at the surfaces so how to understand that uh, if a material is topological or nature so i talked about the band structure earlier remember so if i see a see a conical band structure that is the in energy is kind of linearly uh, increasing with uh, momentum that immediately says that it's a very interesting uh, material and it has some non it can have some non trivial topology so one such material uh, let me say is in our pencil boxes from childhood so and that is called graphite so we write in our uh, pencil with pencils it, this is actually a zoomed in image uh, from a microscope uh, of like a scratch a sketches of uh, graphite so there are many like graphite by itself is a 3d material and you can see that there are many pieces of this graphite here and there but we have to find some 2d flex or 2d uh, like plain sheets of graphite from this so we could have done but uh, we did not do these two scientists did exactly that and got the 2020 uh, 2010 nobel prize for it so they could isolate graphene something called graphene from this graphite okay and uh, these are actually very very flat uh, graphite that we just uh, the flatness is like uh, 1 nanometer or less than that so we can even identify the layer numbers of this graphite but don't worry about it so what's interesting is that uh this has tremendous potential and it's kind of called the wonder material of our age it kind of can uh, give rise to flexible electronics like uh, right now we cannot bend but we can bend and see and uh, starts like the various application ends but what i want to show you here is that this material has this kind of conical nature of the electron momentum that uh, i discussed earlier so that's why it's interesting and uh, actually this material we will use to have some kind of hall, uh, similar effect like the hall effect but at zero magnetic field okay so uh, to understand that i will uh, give a small demonstration one minute i get a ball so think about it okay so maybe one should just stop your screen for now because okay. it's just me okay so this is a ball and uh, this it has a curvature to it like right? the surface has a curvature so what i am going to talk about is some effects of quantum mechanics and i i am representing it in classical way so think about this pen the cap of the pen is facing towards you okay right now i will do some uh, like traverse some trajectory on the surface of the ball and uh, see some effects so first i go down i make up i will make a complete circle on it i turn i turn back i turn again and now i come to the starting point okay so on the ball i traverse this so what i am seeing that i started with the cap towards you but now the cap is bended at a perpendicular direction okay uh, okay uh, i i shall repeat it again so this uh, i am traversing a kind of circle or like complete uh, path along the surface of this ball so right now i can uh, i have this pen pointed towards you the cap of the pen so i am going down 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 like this i am turning i am coming back i am turning again i am coming back to the initial place although the trajectory is completed like start and initial starting and ending points meet the cap now points at a direction different than the starting point so it was here and now it has turned to kind of 90 degree so Uh, if i do the same trajectory kind of in my let's say chart okay so i start like in pointing in this direction i move a complete circle like this and come to the same there is nothing non trivial right the cap started in this direction and it has ended here it's pointing in the same direction so why this effect of uh, thing happen in uh, when i completed the circle in the ball and not on my chart so this phase that i am acquiring it's kind of called uh, the berry space so it by itself has a interesting name 
and it's kind of purely uh, quantum mechanical it's not easy to understand in uh, like day to day examples like let me uh, reshare the screen now okay so i talked about the very space and why this is happening is because of the underlining geometry of the ball in which i am uh, doing so this ball is kind of curved and the curvature is taken into account by this quantum mechanical uh, quantity called the beris curvature which is the cousin of the beris space so the geometry has important roles to play and that's the un uh, understanding that uh, I, uh, oh ah sure sure sorry yeah that's the understanding that people uh, kind of got okay, fine yeah yeah so the beris space Uh, or the like the geometry encoded version of the Berry space, we can call it the Berry curvature. Uh, it's actually different at two places of a graphene. So this is actually a representation of a graphene sheet. So you can see here that it's hexagonal in nature, and the red and the uh, black kind of represent two unique corners of the graphene, which are not identical in the in nature. Why it is not identical? Because actually, it turns out if I do rigorous calculations. the beris curvature is opposite its sign of these two places and uh, what are these two places called it's actually valleys in our terminology so you in your 3d world you see about you see various valleys in lonavala etc so this is the valley of the 2d world so valleys have this unique property that the beri curvature is uh, opposite to each other and what it does is that if i now flow the current in a 2d material in the same way without magnetic field just because of the fact that the very curvature sign one of the valleys black valley get kicked in a perpendicular direction electrons to the other valley get kicked in the perpendicular direction just like hall effect without magnetic field so that's the valley hall effect uh, i must say and it happens we realize this in our lab as well so it's very interesting things get very interesting in our lab and so i have covered basically the three interesting effects i wanted to tell the plateaus donuts in the topology and how topology helps to get to the valleys and uh, the valley hall effect so uh, so why so just a few slides of how what we try to do in our lab is we have uh, got this quantum revolution has got us to this world of 2d right now there is another development which is called the superconductivity so superconductivity is when the resistance goes exactly to zero okay now graphene sheets by itself is not a superconductor it's a like uh, a normal material it's a conductor like conductor of electricity now the unique thing happens if i take graphene and i have graphene so what i can do i will twist it so twisting means keeping two graphene sheets on top of each other and twisting to small angle so uh, maybe you have seen in your uh, Uh, like day to day life if i keep keep nets close by each other you will have huge interesting patterns forming on it so this is called the moire pattern okay once we have this moire patterns is from the 3d world we can make this moire patterns in the 2d world as well so i take two different sheets and rotate it twist it slightly okay so you can see that this modulation of the pattern that's happening is a function of the twist angle and it's the beautiful patterns of moire are coming depending on the angle of twist between the two layers okay so this is a uh, a zoom out version of the uh, moire effect so i take two graphene sheets this is a huge uh, cell of graphene and individually they, the hexagonal patterns you can see is small and if i take this much long sheet you can see modulation which are hexagonal by itself but with a larger like length scale so these are uh, some graphene sheets and twisting that uh, effects that uh, gives us and i talked about this uh, bands earlier right i don't know if i can play the video let's try so if i can engineer the bands uh, okay yeah i can play the video so people like uh, you know that there are various engineering uh, 
degrees that's like a chemical engineer and so on and so forth so what we specialize in we are kind of band engineer so we can engineer the bands and do at will what we want so depending on the twist angle we are kind of changing the bands of the materials and once we do that precisely at some small angle which is called the magic angle 1.1 degree it has been shown that this graphene can be turned as superconductor so that's the interesting Uh, thing that even if the starting material by itself is not a superconductor it can be made your engineer to be a superconductor so just imagine that this ball is a uh, or let's say a, this wood is a insulator i can turn it at conductor by wind so that's the advantages so how we do it so this is kind of the last slide we can precisely uh, in our lab uh, cut uh, like sheets of graphene like this so this is uh, some optical fiber scalpel we can pull it and uh, rub graphene and now we pick one layer of graphene and stack it on top of another so this is how we engineer precisely under microscope and make these 2d materials these are some uh, optical images you will see that this uh, this is the graphene encapsulated between two other different materials for some specific reason so that's basically how we realize things in our lab so let me hide this thing so to summarize with this kind of the end uh, slide so in 1600s kind of the uh, newtonian mechanics were developed and 1800s all those pulleys were built that's the development of the working principles of the classical mechanics now in 1900 our previous century we saw the development of the quantum mechanics from schrodinger's uh, equations this is the time right now that the effects of quantum mechanics is showing up in our devices and it's a pretty good time to join this field of condensed matter where all these uh, interesting effects kind of see these are some just glimpses of two or three effects there are various other effects that happen which do not have a classical analog it's all quantum mechanical in nature so that's basically the end i i have some references to for people if you want so this is basically our group so this is uh, my professor uh, professor deshmukh and these are all uh, lab members at different points of time we go to trek etc for having fun and uh, that's it uh, thank you if you have any question uh, i can take it including uh, what's in the title slide and like uh, so what's this what we will do is uh, we first take online questions right we first take online questions we finish online questions and then we can have a discussion about the online questions okay so yeah. first let me see if there are any online questions uh, there is I'll come here so that I'm yeah, yeah. also audible. Uh, there is one question which from UQ which says, "At what temperature does graphene become superconducting when you twist it?" Okay, actually that's a very interesting question, and the fact is that it's kind of one or two Kelvin. Okay, so what's a Kelvin? The K one Kelvin is uh, like two seventy three Kelvin is our room temperature, and one Kelvin would mean. that it's minus 272 degree centigrade so that's how cool you have to go and we have various facilities in our lab to cool it and realize this uh, superconductivity in our graphene so you can ask that what's the advantage of that uh, is basically we, we have to work more and increase the transition temperature to bring ah, it to so, so temperature so the next question is can you raise that temperature from <laughs> 100 to 70 degrees to make it something useful that's what we are uh, working at and various labs are working at if not with graphene Yeah, the, the field that has opened up is called twistronic. So now what people are doing is taking various different materials. Even let's say one can uh, twist something called the high temperature superconductor. So high temperature superconductor sheets you can take and twist it on top of each other. So maybe if the starting point of the temp, what high temperature superconductor is, it's kind of 90 Kelvin or something like that. If the starting point is higher, maybe you can go even higher. So research is going on uh, at this moment actually. Okay, and are there 2D devices? Wait, one second. Yeah. Uh, are there 2D materials that are making devices at room temperature? People do uh, like not with superconductor, but there are 2D devices like uh, the graphene that I saw uh, that I just told. So that is basically we are uh, exfoliating with a scotch tape method, which I'll talk about uh, maybe in some other day. But that's basically at room temperature, and one can use it to uh, gain something. Uh, like the Hall effect transistor that I talked about, I'll show in the slide. I have, I guess, it's called the room temperature valleytronic transistor. If you can see in the slides, 
So various interesting things uh, show up in room temperature as well. Maybe not superconductivity at the moment, but these other effects like valley hall effect that I talked about, it shows up in this room temperature. Okay, so that seems to be the end of the questions on YouTube. So uh, we'll stop sharing. Yeah, great. So uh, uh, thank you, uh, Shubhajit, for uh, taking us through this uh, thing. Uh, what we will do now is we will stop the live stream. Unfortunately, online audience has no chai for you. If you were here, you get some chai. Uh, so next time, if you're in Mumbai, please come. Uh, what we will do, of course, is continue the discussion over here. But before we end, just to remind you, Chai and Wai will happen 15 days from now, the first Sunday of May. We will be at Prithvi Cafe doing some hands-on activities on design. And a month from now, we will be back over here doing some mathematics puzzles. And this, these are, of course, open for everyone and are going to be great fun, especially for kids. As long as you're young at heart, children of all ages are welcome. So on that note, thanks again, Shruti. Thank, Thank you so you much. Bye. Uh, this is an extremely difficult topic. There's one more question. Uh, what is it? Uh, I can see it here. Okay. Uh, Tarang is asking, topology is taken into consideration with 3D has to be imagined under 2D. If you go to 1D, will string theory come into big Oh, that's an interesting dimension. So, uh, I don't have specific knowledge in that. I just heard that String theory has kind of 11 dimensions, okay? So in uh, like calculation 22. So it basically mathematical representation of these facts and uh, it's interesting to pursue, means I don't have a direct answer, but. So you are trying to reduce dimensions, string theorists are trying to increase dimensions. dimensions. Okay, anyway, uh, I don't think we are experts in string theory anyway to talk about it. So what we will do is we will uh, thank you online audience. So I'm gonna end the live stream and then we'll continue over here. Okay. Uh, while uh, you can continue. Yeah, if there is any question.